Hey everyone, I'm Mel the Scientist, and I am here with a casual geographic reaction. I know you are excited. Um, this video is the experiment that broke a dolphin's heart. Um, I'm already just kind of heartbroken in advance because I'm sure it was a terrible, a terribly done procedure. Um, and uh, I don't want to say I can't wait to hear about it, but um, yeah, let's just find out what happened. This video was sponsored by absolutely no one, because no one in their right mind would sponsor this. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty popular video. Butterfly on a corn cob. I see that I've romanticized a wild animal the same way Margaret Howe did when she off that dolphin in the 1960s. Both she what? and I assaulted a captive creature, then expected it to be reciprocal. Well, jupity boop. Time to die. Oh. Okay. You know, we've done some really questionable things in the name of science. Like that time mm. legitimate attempts at a human Z were made. Or that time a psychologist raised a chimp and a human baby together to see what would happen. We're going to get back to that, but the answer is nothing good. And of course, that time we gave dolphins acid and hand service all for a very mm. questionable science project. You see, the 60s were a special time america and the soviet union were in the midst of a meat measuring contest all the way up into space and mm -hmm. at the same time there was a question as to whether humans could learn to communicate with animals as well as we do with each other and renowned neuroscientist john c Lilly fully took on the task of trying to bridge the gap between the man and animal language barrier now i mentioned his job to show he wasn't just some acid dropping self-stereotype of the 60s don't get me wrong he was but he was also a contributing member of the scientific i was about community. to say in fact he was the one who invented sensory deprivation tanks which he did acid in. Anyway, he was interested in possible human-animal communication, but also in animal intelligence. And that's how dolphins got an invite to this party. At the time, John Lilly saw them as the smartest things on the planet that weren't human. And as a neuroscientist, he was especially drawn to the dolphin's brain. Not only do cetaceans have the largest brains of any animal, bottlenose dolphins have a brain four to five times larger than what you would expect for an animal their size. But what really made Lily Eureka himself was while he was observing and researching dolphins and talking to himself, he realized that the dolphins seemed like they were imitating his voice. And that convinced him that the dolphins were trying to speak to him. And with their high mm. intelligence, John C. Lilly figured that if we could somehow find a way to communicate with dolphins, that could lead to us finding a way to talk to aliens. Which was an Olympic gymnast level stretch, but hindsight... For means, real? Unfortunately, this was the 1960s. Talk Either about way, slippery depending slope. on how you look at it, this was both the best and worst thing that ever happened to his career. The implication of extraterrestrial communication convinced NASA and other government agencies to sponsor Lilly financially. With the help of anthropologist Gregory Bateson, John C. Lilly would create the Dolphin House, where he would attempt to learn how to speak to dolphins. That's how the experiment started, but you don't want to hear about that. You want to get to the part where we started slipping dolphins acid. Oh, trust me, we're going to get to that. Just bear with me. The Dolphin House was built in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and you're going to see why that was actually very ironic. It's like having a gay friend on Dick Street. That's not a joke, by the way. When I went to college, there was a gay fraternity located on D.I.X. Dick Street. That's a true story. So in this experiment, there were three dolphins. There was Sissy, the big sister and leader of the group, Pam, the shy introvert, and a young immature male named Peter. And again, given the circumstances, that name would be so ironic you'd swear it was part of a sick joke. But there was another key character to this story. And that was a Miss Margaret Howe Lovett. Margaret never had any formal scientific training, but apparently she was a natural at observing and documenting animal behavior. So they brought her in and had her work with the one male dolphin, Peter, since he was the only one out of the three that never had any human sound training. So uh. Margaret's goal would be to teach Peter how to speak English the same way a mother would to her child. She would slowly count to three and have Peter repeat after her. She'd say all the vowels in the alphabet and try to get Peter to mimic her. One, two, three. Oh. You can do better, Peter. Did she just tell him he can do better? Sense, since mimicry is how baby dolphins learn how to dolphin from their mothers. But here's the thing with dolphins. In the wild, they communicate with each other through a series of clicks, squeaks, and whistles, and most of that's in the water. But to talk to humans through air, the dolphins would have to make noises through their blowholes. Mm -hmm. It's like if I challenge you to speak perfect English, but without using your mouth. So for anatomical reasons, Peter was pretty much screwed. Mm -hmm. Figuratively, the, the literal is coming. Like Peter. I'll say one thing though, say what you want about Margaret, but she was committed. She painted her face white and her lips black so Peter could see the shape and movement Lord. of her mouth while she was making the noises so he could try to replicate that with his blowhole. She also decided to move in with Peter full time to maximize her time with him. And slowly, Peter was actually getting better at mimicking her. This is the morning lesson with Peter. Hello. 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 Hello.
Hello. Hello. Which made John C. Lilly eureka himself for the second time. Uh -uh. News about this dolphin English project got out and people were curious and John C. Lilly was seen as a visionary. It even got the attention of world-renowned astronomer Carl Frickin Sagan. The Frickin is silent. Now I'd like to point out that at this point this was a several thousand if not million dollar NASA funded experiment. Mm -hmm. Like people's careers and reputations were hanging on this. Yet nobody stopped to think that it might be physically impossible for dolphins to produce the sounds needed to speak English. Especially from an air anus on its head. And keep in mind, John C. Lilly was a neuroscientist. One of the professions you pray your siblings or cousins never get because then your parents will never let you forget it. And apparently there was some disconnect. Gregory Bateson was like, why are we teaching them English when we should be learning how they speak to each other? He even had the oh, idea right. of putting two dolphins in two tanks where they couldn't see each other but could communicate through sound. That way we could study the sound and figure out dolphin language. Lilly's response was, nah, we teach them English. You know, naked mole rats spend their entire lives using their teeth as shovels underground, and even they have less tunnel vision. And ironically, they might have actually had better luck if they used an animal like a raven or a parrot or even a seal. You know, animals that are actually capable of mimicking human speech. Shut up. But I guess dolphins were the hill to die on. So Margaret and Peter kept on with the lessons, but soon there would be another problem. Peter was a young, sexually immature male with the attention span of one. So how do you get a hormonal teenager going through puberty to listen to you? Yep, we finally made it to that part. So whenever Peter would get distracted, Margaret would send him downstairs to play with Pam and Sissy. But dolphins can mate several times a day, if not an hour, and the constant disruptions were starting to slow their progress down. So Margaret figured she could kill two birds with one stroke. Stone. <laughs> stroke. Two things happened after that. Peter got a job he never applied for, and after that the only virgin on the premises was the very island itself. Mm -hmm. Playing tug of war with little Peter meant Margaret had more time to teach big Peter English, and as a species that often uses decapitated fish, I'm sure Peter wasn't complaining. So now Margaret had a full-time job teaching Peter English while also learning anatomy and chemistry part-time. But patience was starting to run thin because there was another thing a group of scientists somehow never thought of. You could teach a dolphin how to speak English, but that doesn't mean he'll understand any of it because mimicry right. is comprehension. Exactly. Any pretentious dude in the bar can say E equals MC squared, asking exactly. what it actually means and watch how fast his face falls. Exactly. It started as an experiment to learn to communicate with a highly intelligent non-human creature quickly devolved into an R-rated game of Simon Says, except with more hand service and drugs. And now we're at that part of the story. You see, at this point, John Lilly was under a lot of pressure. Unlike Peter, financial backers had started to pull out. And Gregory Bateson, who was already right, stepping to begin with, was now starting to seriously wonder just how far they were willing to go for science. Soon, he'd get his answer, just not the one he wanted. Like I said, the 60s were a different time. And around this time, a fun little thing known as lysergic acid diethylamide was quickly gaining traction as a potentially mind-altering, conscious-expanding substance. John Lilly would frequently participate in the consumption of a little slice of delight which he would take while in the sensory deprivation tank. It's not like he was a stranger to such activity. John Lilly wrote his first book, Man and Dolphin, over the course of one weekend while off amphetamines. Mm. So when he hit a roadblock in his research, hey, Lilly was dead over the course of one weekend while off amphetamines. Interesting choice of book cover. Ah. Amphetamines. So when he hit a roadblock in his research, Lilly was desperate and his Hail Mary, Let's give dolphins LSD and see what happens. Margaret wasn't having any of that and demanded that he keep that nonsense away from Peter. But at the time, Margaret was basically a 24-year-old intern and John C. Lilly had was no power. a big-time scientist. Mm -hmm. And like I said, hindsight's 2020, and logic had real estate in his blind spot. So John took Peter along with Pam and Sissy on a lovely Saturday drive and recorded what happened. And apparently, nothing. Dolphins might have been slightly noisier, but pretty much nothing to record. Lily was beyond down bad, and he was desperate for a response, and he knew that dolphins have an incredible sense of hearing. So he got out a jackhammer, because at this point, I don't think this was even about dolphins anymore. I think he just wanted to do acid. And this was mm -hmm. the 60s. It's not like you needed an excuse for that kind of thing. So John Lily pulled out a jackhammer and just started jacking away, an activity I'm sure that room had seen more than enough of. And the noise didn't seem to do anything, but probably ruined whatever trip the dolphins were on. At this point, Gregory Bateson had seen more than enough. Remember how I said he started to wonder how far they were willing to go? Well, apparently his line in the sand was giving dolphins a little sense of direction. If the experiment was a train and science was the tracks, at this point this thing was halfway down the Pacific, so he packed up and left. It was kind of wraps for the entire experiment after that. At one point, Lily tried communicating with the dolphins telepathically, so safe to say the acid had won. And as the experiment was called off and the staff separated, the dolphins were shipped out. So here's where a lot of the facts got left out for the sake of the story. Where? So it's popular belief that after the experiment ended and Peter was separated from Margaret, he proceeded to die of a broken heart. And Literally. Now part of that is probably true. 
Let's just put it this way. Peter had gotten used to getting a special job every day and he went from that to being painfully unemployed. Forget unemployed, bro was in a recession. And there's the fact that Peter very likely caught feelings for this woman that he had been around 24 seven. But here's the part people leave out. Peter was shipped out to a former bank building in Miami to live. His new home was a tight cramped tank that he could barely turn around to with Are you serious? natural light. Also think of how bad public bathrooms smell and then imagine an animal that uses the bathroom five times more than any human. So yeah, Peter got effed over, only this time it was completely figurative. Another fact about dolphins is they aren't involuntary breathers like us. Every breath they take is a conscious choice. Mm. It's why dolphins can only sleep by resting half their brain at a time, otherwise they would just not breathe and flatline themselves. We know this because when John Lilly operated on dolphins to observe their brain and put them under anesthesia, the dolphins ended up suffocating. So Peter made the executive decision to delete himself, likely due to depression. Margaret didn't do much better. Cause when Hustler Magazine found out about her and Peter and what she did to Peter, they wrote a story on her and let's just say it wasn't a good look. Yeah. Also, did I mentioned she never got paid for this. Like imagine your what? entire legacy, like what you're gonna leave on this earth was that you had relations with a wild animal and didn't even get paid for it. Ugh. So I guess both she and Peter got screwed. Peter's death wasn't even the last time something like this would happen. Kathy was a dolphin who played Flipper, and once the show ended and she was moved to an isolated pen, she too would proceed to cross her name off the census. Maybe it's a good thing we never learned how to talk to dolphins, because I imagine they wouldn't have much positive to say. They'd probably right. call John Lilly their Hitler. Speaking of him, he continued to experiment, but when a light seasoning of dope became illegal, he started doing ketamine. And like I wow. said, we've done some sick things for science. Like when psychologist Winthrop Kellogg decided to raise his human baby son alongside a female chip named Guada. See what would happen. What happened was his human son started acting feral, walking on exactly. the floor, like Gua, and even biting people. When the experiment ended and they sent off the female chimp that they had raised as a daughter to be used in more experiments, Gua would flatline to pneumonia a couple months later, and the boy she was raised with, Donald, would grow up to be a psychiatrist. Until he would also delete himself at the age of 43. Okay, so I guess the theme that of this makes video more was sense. Sometimes science goes way too far. And as groundbreaking as it was, it somehow wouldn't be the last time someone publicly had relations with a dolphin. Uh. Like this man had an entire relationship with a dolphin named Dolly that he claimed seduced him. Only difference was, they went way past handwork, and to my knowledge, no substances were involved. Now, in uh. fairness to him, he did have to deal with some pretty heavy trauma as a kid, namely when he was violated by a psychiatrist at the age of five, according to a podcast he was on that I watched. Speaking of which, like the video. Like the video. I watched it and that was not pleasant. And I get that different people cope in different ways, but did it really have to involve backdooring a dolphin? Like, how would you even, like, like, like logistically, how would you even get the pieces to, you, you know, we're not even going down that rabbit hole. Please. Because he might try to go in there too. Now, Lily's experiment uh, was famous for hmm. all the wrong reasons, but it did have some positive effects. A lot of what we understand about the intelligence of dolphins and cetaceans in general came from his work, and it really helped shift the public perception of them. That shift is likely what led to the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972. Lily would also go on to campaign against the use of dolphins in captivity. Which was pretty admirable, but at the same time, like, bro, you gave dolphins acid. You can't exactly. no more talk time after that. No. However, a lot of people see this project as a massive waste of time and resources. I disagree. The point of the experiment was to see if dolphins could learn to speak English, and now thanks to him, we know they can't. They cannot. Because drunk history said it best. You wouldn't just kidnap a Japanese man and keep him from his family and give him hand service that he didn't ask for and a little surprise dose that he definitely didn't ask for and suddenly expect him to start belting out fluent English. But that's going to do it for this video. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my Instagram and TikTok. I try to post daily on both. And if you would like to further support this channel, my Patreon's also going to be in the description. Because let's be real, ain't no way YouTube finna let me monetize this. Either way, drink water, hug your mother, don't hug a dolphin because apparently it could lead to more than you're equipped to deal with and I'll see you in the next one oh oh that is just absolutely atrocious um yeah that um and sadly that's not even going to be the worst thing you've ever heard that is one of the worst things I've ever heard though let's get that straight yeah that that's disgusting and I actually expected a lot of what he said. Uh, yeah, that's... What else do you have to say after that? I mean, it's not even a conversation. That's disgusting, cruel. I mean, you know, the sad part is like... A lot of this made common sense. The things that you shouldn't have done. And also like, the hypotheses that you... That you developed and the results you were trying to gain from that just did not add up. I mean, like he said, you you really thought that they were actually going to understand what you said simply because you're having them mimic what you said? That makes no actual common sense. Like, how did you, how did you not think of that? 
and make yeah that's so illogical um but hey they got the government to sponsor them so i guess that's all that matters and there's so many people out there with like actual legitimate experiments and um ways to actually help society that aren't getting noticed um but they want to fund stuff like that like like he said it's, it was the 60s the 60s is a <laughs> the 60s is its own special time period but it can be argued that we're kind of no better even today yeah a lot of this made no sense but he was also high the entire time allegedly so <laughs> it wasn't going to make sense anyway his brain was obviously um obviously not in the right state if he was high on drugs and then also with this here like the child started acting feral because his friend is a monkey or whatever whichever type of monkey it is but um yeah i mean like what do you expect that boy to still act like a human being when you've literally raised him alongside a feral animal bestiality is just it's, it's just so disgusting and just cringe worthy to even hear that people have done something like this i mean in the sad part is you wouldn't be surprised but at the same time you just don't want to hear that someone has done that i truly feel sorry for the dolphins that were a part of this experiment yeah i don't have any more to say but uh thank you to all of you who uh watched all the way through the end um please be sure to like share and subscribe uh i hope you learned something also um a lot of you that watch my videos are not subscribed the gap is very wide so um i would very much appreciate it if you did subscribe and support the channel um i am not an advanced video uh what's it called i am not very good at uh video recording and editing and all of that stuff um so it's a lot of effort on my part to do this um so uh i would truly love to have your support and yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video peace